Hello mga ka-learners! Let's continue our exploration of Mindanao, its people and its history. At this point, you already know about the final peace agreement established under the Ramos administration. The question is, is this agreement really the final agreement? This lesson will discuss the effects of the peace initiatives and the peace accord between the government and the leaders of Mindanao on the people of the islands and the Philippines as a whole. In this lesson, we will discuss whether or not the final peace agreement was successful. Go online and find some news articles about Mindanao. Study them and reflect on the issues they deal with. What do these issues tell you about Mindanao? Do you think there is already peace in Mindanao? After the final peace agreement was signed on September 2, 1996, there were still a lot of struggles for peace in Mindanao. Here are some events that happened after the final peace agreement was signed. 1996. The final peace agreement was signed on September 2. The MILF, another rebel group, distanced itself from the agreement but committed not to stand in the way of peace. Ms. Wari ran for ARMM governor and won. Ramos issued Executive Order 371, which outlined the specific projects to be implemented in the SZOPAD. These projects dealt with health and sanitation services, education, housing, water supply, building roads and bridges, telecommunications, agriculture, etc. The government formed a new negotiating panel to hold talks with the MILF in October. The MILF held a huge assembly near Cotabato City from December 3 to 5 and reaffirmed its commitment to independence, a separate state of Muslim Mindanao. 1997, heavy fighting between the MILF and the government left more than 100 dead. A meeting of the MILF and the government in early February was suspended because of renewed fighting. The AFP launched its biggest offensive in June. By July, an agreement on a temporary end of hostilities was forged. Further meetings between the two sides followed. 1998, a new president, Joseph Estrada, was elected. He allegedly had an electoral alliance with politicians who opposed the peace agreement. Anti-agreement politicians did well in the local elections. MNLF leaders, save for one, lost their bid for local positions. A new government negotiating panel continued to talk to the MILF. 1999. September was the supposed deadline of phase one of the final peace agreement's implementation. New outbreaks of fighting between MILF and AFP followed by re-establishment of ceasefire. September 2, 1999 was the end of Phase 1 of the final peace agreement's implementation. By September 3 of the same year, the government should have been implementing the second phase that included the granting of full autonomy to the provinces of SZOPAD that voted for autonomy. You have probably seen on television, heard over the radio, or read in the newspaper that violence continues to damage properties and take lives of the people in Mindanao. Violent clashes between the rebels and the military continue despite the peace agreement signed by MNLF and the Ramos administration. The agreement may have sealed cooperation and understanding between the MNLF and the government. However, unless the government proves its sincerity and wanting to bring peace to Mindanao, its people would continue to fight for their survival and self-determination. This, however, does not mean that the 1996 peace agreement has no importance at all. The peace agreement remains a breakthrough in achieving peace in Mindanao. The peace agreement may not have solved the problems in Mindanao entirely, but it is a considerable start towards attaining peace in Mindanao. For indeed, it is difficult to attain peace, especially since the government settled with only one of the rebel groups. 
it is important to note that there are other groups in Mindanao. The MILF, for example, recognized the government's peace initiatives, but remained cautious about the government's intentions behind the signing of the agreement. The MILF announced that they are also willing to negotiate with the government. However, as negotiations between the government and the MILF proceeded, clashes between the two also erupted. Other rebel groups include the NPA and the Abu Sayyaf, which are more aggressive. The 1996 final peace agreement proves that the government and the Muslim rebel groups are willing to end the violence in Mindanao. However, attaining peace is a long and tedious process, especially because Mindanao and its people are so complex and diverse. This is probably the reason why peace remains elusive in Mindanao. Let's summarize what we have learned so far. Despite the failures of Phase 1 of the final peace agreement's implementation in providing the basic services of the people of Mindanao, the agreement remains a breakthrough in attaining peace in Mindanao. It is really difficult to forge peace in Mindanao especially because its people are so complex and diverse. They are different in so many ways. Unless they learn to live harmoniously with each other, peace would remain an unreachable dream. Congratulations! This is almost the end of the lesson and the module. So, how was it? Did you enjoy studying about the Mindanao Peace Accord? Were you able to achieve deeper understanding regarding the conflict in Mindanao? If so, very good. There are more lessons to study, so continue to stay tuned, mga ka-learners.